Hi, welcome to the Louis File. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about what the Bible says about how we should view ourselves. Um, you know, some people misunderstand what being humble is. You know, I mean, humility is not, um, I heard it described this way, humility is not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. How about that? I always thought that was a good one. You know, the Apostle Paul in Romans 12, I think it is, said that we are to not think of ourselves more highly than we ought, you know, but think of ourselves with sound judgment, right? And then in, uh, I think it's Galatians 6, he says, uh, we shouldn't think that we are something when we are nothing. I'm like, wow, <laughs> that's pretty amazing. And uh, a lot of times people, uh, Christians with good intentions, uh, think that putting themselves down is being humble. You know, they think they're not worthy or, or whatever. And, I, you know, it's amazing to me because pride comes in two different things. It, pride, we tend to think of pride as being like puffed up when we think we're thinking more highly of ourselves than we ought. Like, you know, I'm so smart, I'm so good looking, I'm so far advanced, I'm so much better. But, you know, there's an, another end, another side to pride, which is a uh, false humility. When we are uh, putting ourselves down and we're acting as though we're no good and we're a dirty, rotten scoundrel and we'll never do better or we'll never get where God is pleased with us. You know, one of them is patting ourselves on the back, talking about how great we are. And the other one is sort of pressing ourselves down and, and talking about how awful we are. But if you really uh, think about that at all very long, you'll start to realize that both of them are pride because they're both about me. <laughs> they're both about, one's about how great I am, one's about how rotten I am, but they're both about me. Isn't that something? So I think what God is wanting us to do, he's wanting to see us, he's wanting us to see ourselves the way he sees us, and uh, he sees us as powerless. Um, he knows we're powerless, but we don't know that yet. He knows that we have no ability in and of ourselves to accomplish and to do what he has called us to do, uh, to live life and to be fulfilled and to be productive. Uh, you know, the Apostle Paul in uh, 2 Corinthians 12, he, he started bragging about himself a little bit and he said, I could tell you about a man I once knew that, that uh, had these great visions, you know, of the third heaven. He said, seeing things that he couldn't even lawfully even mention. He said, but I'm not going to talk about that guy. <laughs> he said uh, he said he'd rather boast in his weaknesses. He came to the conclusion, he finally got the real revelation that God is the all and he wants to be all powerful in us who is the nothing that has no power. He, he Paul said that he would rather glory in his weaknesses because when he was weak, then God's power was displayed that much more. See, it, that runs completely contrary to the way the world sees things. The world thinks we're supposed to have the biggest muscles, the smartest, the biggest uh, bank account, and that we're going to win and get ahead that way. Or maybe the biggest, greatest firepower, you know, the greatest military force on the planet is going to get the job done. Well, that's just not the way it works. You know, God displayed his awesome might in the greatest way through a human being dying on a cross and being buried. He displayed it through a dead body by raising it back to life and offering us all eternal hope and eternal life through that man, that, that Jesus Christ. You know, weakness played all the way out is eventually death, isn't it? You know, I heard a story once about uh, scientists came to conclude that the temperature, I think it's about 459 degrees below zero, it's called absolute zero. And they said it's the perfect place to conduct electricity uh, because there is absolutely nothing moving. And electricity travels best when it has least or no resistance. And at 459 degrees below zero, there is no resistance. So electricity travels with un unhindered. So that's a pretty awesome thing. So think about this. The Bible says that we've been crucified with Christ and we no longer live, but Christ now lives in us and it's him living in and through us and he is our life. 
So if we really got a hold of the revelation that we were dead, then we would, we would have no resistance to God's Holy Spirit. And then His Holy Spirit would travel through us unhindered. So in fact, His power would be displayed in us whew, in a mighty way because we would be the nothing by which He would display His all. Wow. <laughs> Ponder that one for a bit. So we have to reckon ourselves dead so that His life can flow through us without any opposition or hindrances or resistance. So there you have it. That was God's solution all along, was for us to recognize our inability. And the more we see ourselves as powerless and then eventually see ourselves as dead in Christ and that he's now living his life through us, the more we'll get accomplished. <laughs> that's, that's perfect rest. And that's where God wants us. All right, well, that's all for now. I'll, I'll talk to you next time. Thanks.